Okay, to start the disassembly process on the supercharger build, we're going to remove a lot of components to begin with. We're going to remove the saddlebags, the seat, side covers, gas tank, the idle air control bracket and motor, and on the other side the ignition switch, the floorboard, and everything in front of the motor to include the cowls, the grill, the front pipe, battery, and oil cooler. We're going to list those items. You can pause the screen to review them as you take them off. Okay, we got our bike stripped down with the uh, list of items that we've got on the screen for you before. Next thing is that we want to, one, make sure that we have the bike securely um, chalked on the front wheel and fastened with the straps as indicated in the picture. And then we're going to put a jack underneath the motor. We're going to put, bring the jack up so it's got some tension supporting some weight. And we're going to remove all three of the front bolts here. We're going to loosen the two bolts in the back and remove the one indicated by the picture at the bottom of the screen. Once that's done, we're going to have to slowly drop this down with the goal of removing the throttle body, the upper adapter, and the manifold that's on the bike. So before we could do that, we have to take our bolts out for our fuel rail and take the bolt out for our T-MAP sensor. We're going to do that now, and then we're going to show you the lowering process once we get this completed. Okay, we've dropped our motor by lowering the jack down, and in the process we removed the throttle body assembly and the fuel injectors and fuel rail. We've removed the valve covers and the cam chain cover. This is the point at which we have to remove the crank gear and replace it with the crank drive gear for the supercharger. So at the same time, if you haven't already put VM1 or VM1S cams in this, now is the time to do both. So with the Hall Effect sensor here, we're going to remove that out of the cam chain cover. Set that down there, and we're going to set the cover aside. The Hall Effect will now mount to the bracket that we're going to include for the supercharger kit. So at this point, we need to remove the cam chains and the timing wheel. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and remove the cam chains and shoes and the timing wheel. And we're going to get set up to show you how to remove the cam gear. Okay, the next step is to pull the crank gear off. We pulled our cam chains, we pulled our shoes, and our timing wheel. What we found to be the least expensive tool to do this process with is a Pittman arm puller. And uh, you can see at the bottom of the screen, they're typically like $12, $13 at the Napa dealer. Really inexpensive. Uh, all you have to do is widen the jaws, you know, approximately an eighth inch on each side. We'll get you the exact measurements for that. And basically it just slides over the gear like so. Make sure that you are wearing your safety glasses because when stuff breaks on this type of application, shit can go bad really quick. And if it does, at least you keep your eyesight in the process. So, just slide her over. Pretty easy. Okay, now the next step is to put our our shaft drive on. So we're going to get set up for that and we'll be right back. Okay, just a couple of things before we uh, press our drive gear on. As you can see, this is the gear that comes off, drives cam chains. This is the gear that we're going to put back in place. The back side of the gears are identical. They have to be or we're going to get too much wear. But um, one of the things you want to spray this down, clean it up first when you take it out of the bag, clean the shaft up, 
and then also clean the thread holes out in this gear or in this, the end of this crank. Uh, get some of that Loctite out that's been in there and bl just blow air blow it out. The, uh, we're going to put this in an oven, set it 500 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, at that point, you know, try to get the part as close as you can to uh, the bike prior to sliding it on. If you do heat it up with some other source, uh, don't use a torch. You know, um, ideally an oven is, is the best way because it, it uh, lets the part grow. Heat saturates the whole part instead of a torch where it just hits one side. Um, if you have an inductive heater, awesome. You know, that's probably the best way. But uh, you don't want to be putting a lot of heat with this with a torch. Um, this part is precision ground to within one ten thousandth of an inch spec and we want to keep it that way. So uh, before you go and do anything stupid, um, try to make sure that you heat it up correctly and with the right environment. how simple it is. Okay now that part was actually up to 400 degrees temperature when we installed it. You can see how easy it went on. Um, you want to follow it up with the correct you know bolt and washers so that you can make sure that it stays on there while it cools because in the cooling process it'll have a tendency to work itself off the shaft. You want to make sure that there is not an air gap between the gear and the crank. We want to make sure that this gear is fully seated against the crank. Um, I found in before in the past that using a feeler gauge isn't always the best way to do it. So how I like to do it now is by taking a small flashlight, shining it on the bottom side and then looking up through the rear or down through the rear cam chain galley to see if we can see any light between the gear and the crank. Um, Sometimes the feeler gauge will get caught up on the rolled edge of that crank and won't allow it to drop in, therefore you think it's, it's seated, but really it's not. So just make sure you don't have an air gap once this is put on and cooled. Okay, on the last set we had just installed the crank gear for the uh, supercharger drive and we took the liberty of putting the cams and the cam chains in and both valve covers to button that area up. Uh, shouldn't really be any explanation at this period of time on how to do cams. So uh, with that we're just going to move on and on how to do the uh, fuel and um, plenum throttle body installation. The kit is going to come with five sets of O-rings. Uh, we're going to take two sets of the 49 by 2 millimeter O-rings and we're going to drop one down on each of the cylinder heads. It comes all the way to the bottom, not in the groove here, all the way in the bottom. You're going to take your two cones and you're going to snap them over top 
And then the other pair of 49 millimeter O-rings. Goes on the center of the cones. Okay, the stock fuel rail comes pretty much straight. It's not in any real shape. The inlet has to face upwards. So with that, we've got our injectors already mounted and the clips in place. You just fold these in, take them, and drop them in the motor. And then, of course, take the bolts that you used to hold the original fuel rail in place. We'll go back in place both here and here, and we'll tighten them up. We're going to cut this off, and then we're going to go on to our plenum install. Okay, next step is to assemble the plenum intercooler, throttle body, and manifold. First off, we're going to start by putting our um, three by 48 millimeter O-rings in the plenum area here. Uh, it's normally easier to lay the plenum down like this to uh, work with it. Put your screws in. Uh, it comes supplied with the kit. The throttle body. You're going to take the throttle body that we send you because it's already modified. Uh, that goes on with the TPS sensor towards the inside like so. We're going to take our manifold and we have, if you look on the inside of the manifold, there's a recess cut out in here for the 3 by 55 millimeter O-rings. They slide down in here. Like that. And then on the top side gets the two by 49 millimeter O-rings. We also like to take a little bit of silicone and just put a little bead of silicone around each one of these. Um, we haven't had any issues with it leaking just by O-ring, but you know it's always a little extra insurance policy. Also a little light layer of silicone in on the taper of the manifold wouldn't hurt. Take your manifold. Line also goes in towards the uh, plenum area. And just tighten up all the bolts. The we really don't have a torque value on this because you're crushing a lot of the O-rings. Um, so torque values can change a little bit. I can say this. If you really need to have a torque value on something like this, well, maybe we should be looking at you having doing something else instead of putting a supercharger kit together. But nonetheless, put your bolts in and make sure that they're adequately secured and clamping down the O-rings, the throttle body, and the manifold. As so. Now it's ready to go on to the bike. Here's our stock fuel line and we're going to continue to use stock fuel line. The only thing we have to do is rotate both fittings 180 degrees in the hose. Um, normally it's pretty easy. Just grab the hose, turn the fitting, like so and then that's going to go in here like this so first of all we're going to make sure that our fuel rail that we put on take and tuck these hoses inside the fins of the head like so this will retain the fuel rail keep it nice and stiff won't allow it to rub on on anything and you know heat has not been an issue with uh, with our fueling we're going to snap this hose in place 
to start with. Just tuck this one up over here. And then we can start put our uh, our assembly in. Now keep in mind that when you're going through this, we've got a lot of wires and hoses to route. You always want to run your hoses and check your hoses, make sure they're not going to rub on anything, make sure that they're out of the way, so on and so forth. Just common sense stuff. We're going to take our surge line, drop it down behind our fuel lines, start pulling it through while we set our plenum up. The plenum's going to sit on the cones. You're probably going to have to uh, have someone give you a hand um, holding the, the plenum in place while you lift the motor back up because the frame is what's going to hold all of this together. It's going to make a crush fit, keep everything secure and keep our uh, boost pressure in check, keep it from leaking out. We don't have to take this out. This will recess alongside, this will drop that down alongside the recess in the plenum area. Uh, you just have to be careful. You might have to tip the, uh, the whole assembly up a little bit as you're starting to come up. So uh, right now we're going to uh, go ahead and get this thing in place and um, come back with the next shot. Okay, we went, we've jacked the motor up and we've installed the front and rear mounts and bolts and tightened them up. Um, there is going to be a point where you might have to uh, put a little bar in there just to get a little bit more pressure downward to get all the holes to line up because this is a press fit in here. Um, once it's in there, it's not going to move. It's going to seal up nice and tight. Next part is to install the uh, parts in this area here. We're going to start off by um, our T-MAP voltage generator, which is this device here comes with a set of connectors that goes onto the injector and a connection that interfaces with the T-MAP. This has to be installed on the injector first. So typically we're going to be running power commanders on these for proper tuning. Um, no matter what fuel controller is on it, this always goes on the injector first and then whatever else you're using for fuel goes on this end. This is the end for the T-MAP. I'm going to pop the T-MAP off the stock harness. We're going to snap this one in place and then interface the female with the male on this side like so. Tuck it down into place here. install our bolt. Of course just like everything else remember um, we've got our throttle linkage right here so we want to route these wires so they're not going to interfere with the throttle linkage. We want to push these uh, connectors that are you know, up out of the way somewhere also. Next part is to uh, install our throttle cable bracket. This is the modified one that we're sending with the modified throttle body as a core. The, uh, sometimes it's easier to install the bracket on um, after you put the cables on. But one of the things that you're going to want to do is um, typically the painted lines match up on the nut and the threads of this. I'm going to break the bolt loose or nut loose and we're going to take and turn this in one and a half times. That's normally what's needed to stabilize our idle because of the uh, and then lock your nut down because of the fact that we're not using the IAC control idle anymore. We have to remove the hoses or the pressure just blows through the IAC and defeats the purpose of having a boosted application. So we can put these into play here, put them all together.
Okay, that's into play. Next item is our IAC. We have to reinstall the IAC only to keep it hooked up electronically, not with the hoses. The hoses are gone. You can see when we put the IAC bracket on there that this screw will hit the bracket here and this part of the um, throttle bracket for the cruise control is going to hit the bracket here. These dashed lines, silver lines, are the parts that we need to cut out in order to clearance for the throttle movement. If not, the throttle will hang up when it hits that bracket and gets stuck open at like 60%. So we're going to clearance these, install the bracket, I'm just going to hook up the electronics. Once the bracket's clearanced, put it on, and that pretty much ends this part of the uh, install. Okay, the next step is we're going to do our blower mount. What we've done is we've already installed our Hall Effect sensor on. We want to use a little blue Loctite on these screws. You want to um, silicone both sides of the plate and gasket. And don't forget to put a little extra down here where this uh, one screw overlaps the gasket surface. And then also we need to put a little silicone on the inside where the wires run through the grommet, rubber grommet, as indicated in the pictures that we're going to show you. After we do that, um, these two screws have to come out. These two locations here. We have to take our timing gear, this side out, and install it on our uh, drive shaft. Sometimes it doesn't go on that easy. Sometimes you have to tap it on with a hammer. Tap, not bang, it on with a hammer. Sometimes they're a little bit tighter fitting, which is okay. And then We'll pick our plate up. Get it started here. Now all these screws that go in here, these are all um, 12 point ARP stainless steel screws. You want to put Loctite on them. You want to use red Loctite. The, uh, between the heat and expansion of this uh, plate and all the force that's being put on them, uh, they have sometimes a tendency to uh, loosen up. We don't want that. Always snug them down to begin with, oh, starting in the center, working out. Okay, we've snugged down all our bolts, now we're going to torque them to 12 foot-pounds. Starting with the center first. And then the next step is to install our two spacers. The spacers come, for the most part, slightly oversized for most bikes. Um, this space, for whatever reason, seems to vary from bike to bike. So uh, very rarely will the spacers just fit in there for you. Normally you have to take a little bit off. We've gone ahead and, and done that already. So um, what you want to make sure though is that when you get your spacers cut that you make it so they just slip in or slip in with a little bit of a tapping. We don't want to have too much uh, slop between this, between the plate and the motor because when we tighten them down it will cock the plate a little bit. So you want to try to keep the uh, spacer as snug as possible going in. Use our two long bolts supplied with the kit and we're going to uh, run them in and torque them down to 22 foot-pounds each. Okay, our next step is to take our stock cable that came off of the uh, battery to relay mount. 
We're going to pull both the covers off both ends of this. We're going to take and cut the short red lead like so. We're going to tape that up. And then we're going to take the small red cover, put it over top. And this is the side that's going to attach to the, uh, to the starter. You face that straight towards the other side of the motor. Cover it up. Okay, after we've got our cable on, we're going to install our blower. Blower slides into the mount plate from the back. Comes up like that. Install our three, uh, these are some of the only standard size uh, bolts that come with the kit. So we're going to install our uh, 5 16 Allen head bolts. We're going to end up torquing these down to 22 foot pounds. We don't have to use Loctite on these, these uh, clamp pretty well with the uh, tapered heads on them. Sometimes it's a little bit harder to get them out once you get them in there because they like to seat against that plate pretty hard. Blower orientation is normally set when we ship it. However, there again, bike to bike, it does vary um, slightly. So if you do need to rotate the housing, there's three bolts that secure the housing to the uh, to the blower unit, you've got one located here. You've got one located back here, which you can access through the hole in the um, tensioner slide. And you've got one up on top that you access from this side. You just loosen them, and then you can rotate the housing slightly one way or the other and lock them back down. Okay, warning. These come dry. Add one of them. It says it on the tag. You fill it up here. There's a dipstick on the end. You take the tag back off. After you put the bottle in, you put the dipstick back in and tighten it up. Simple. Okay, after that, we're going to put our pipe on. Use the supplied gasket. Stock gaskets don't work. It won't work any better in this application. So we're going to use our uh, soft gaskets in this here. Slide the pipe in. Pretty simple fit. Put our clamps supplied in the kit in it on it. Okay, we're going to snug those two up and come down and tighten up our clamp here. Next is installation of our collar. Doesn't really matter which side the o ring is on, I prefer to put the o ring on towards the inside. And it is snug fit, you have to uh, start it on square. Next will be our pulley and keyway. Keyway's got a little bit of a arch or crown to it that goes towards the inside. Sometimes you do have to uh, Tap it into play. Put her, well, actually, before I put my pulley on, I'm going to show you where the dipstick, dipstick goes in here. A little easier for you to see on that camera angle. The dipstick is shaped for the inside to use a 8 millimeter ball Allen. 
So you can use it straight on or at an angle. Our next thing is to install the rear drive pulley. Sometimes it fits a little snug, so you may have to use a plastic or rubber mallet. Line the keyway up. Snap her in. Once our pulley's on, have our bolt and washer. On this, we want to put a little dab of silicone on the threads here. We want to put a little silicone around the edge of the washer. The reason being is that if we don't do that, even though that the drive shaft gear is pressed onto the crank pretty hard, we do seem to get a little oil weepage between the keyway. And then the keyway will end up, end up leaking out the drive shaft and then out around the uh, pulley here and sometimes you think it's a uh, seal leak when it's actually coming from here. So between putting a little silicone here and on the washer, that eliminates that problem. Put your bolt and uh, washer in there, torque that down to 22 foot-pounds also. And the belt. Belts always go on so you can read it from uh, left to right. Slide our belt over, like so. We're going to raise the pulley up, we're going to tighten it. You can typically take and, um, you know, put a, uh, if you use a screwdriver, don't use a screwdriver against the pulley like this. Try to uh, put something between them, either a piece of rubber, a rag, so you don't mar up the tensioner pulley. We're going to put enough tension on it so that we can turn the belt halfway. We don't want it too tight at this point because as the pulleys and the belt are heating up, it will get tighter. So just keep that in mind that uh, when these get hot, it gets tight. So we don't want to start overly tight to begin with. Um, there will not be any warranty uh, from stuff that gets broken due to belts being too tight. We've never ever had an issue, so don't make one. Okay, next we're gonna do our belt cover, which is pretty simple, three bolts, four millimeter Allen. Don't ask me for a torque value. Something like this, you know, flex, feel it in your elbow, something like that. It doesn't need to be super tight. If it's too loose and falls off, you weren't tight enough to begin with, you get the picture. Tighten them up. They like to self-lock against the aluminum anyway. Also, old kits, uh, newer kits are going to be coming with a top belt guard. If that is the case, of course, we're going to leave those two screws off um, on the mount, and this will attach in those two locations there. And with those, those get tightened up with a five millimeter Allen also to roughly six to eight foot-pounds or one quarter turn tension on your snap-on Allen wrench. That ends that. Yeah, now, since we're at this step, we have all of our parts installed, we can go on to charging our, um, installing our intake tube the rest of the way. So we're going to take the supplied um, silicone elbows, slide it on your supercharger. You can slide it pretty far, about halfway down. Take your clamps. I like to get these where these are facing down so they're a little bit easier to get to with a flathead screwdriver. Two on each. Take the back one, put it on. Slide it all the way back up against the, suit, the uh, intercooler. Same deal. Uh, slot down so you can access it. Take 
it's a little tough to put the, uh, the tube on, so we use a hook tool you can get from wherever, make one, do whatever you gotta do. Slide the front end, back lined up, take the hook tool, pull the silicone hose around. Take your hose that was on the, it's hooked, connected to the throttle plates. It's going to come down right here. Hook that right up to your surge valve. That would be what controls your surge valve under vacuum. Then take a flat screwdriver and tighten those up. Alright, now that we got our intake tube fully installed to our intercooler and supercharger, I'm going to move on down to hooking up the rest of like our relays, electronics, and stuff like that. Um, so what we're going to do is take our bracket, it's going to be supplied with some rivets and washers, so your bracket is going to come off your battery box, you rivet this on the top of your T-bracket for the relay. So we're going to take this, pull the bolts out. What I do is, after you take the um, timing cover off, you're going to have all these leftover bolts, they work perfect for uh, replacing this and tightening this up. So we're going to take our starter relay, put the bolts through. There'll be some spacers supplied with the kit right here. They're going to go on the back side of this. Go right back into the same bolt holes that came out of. On your relay, there's going to be, on these it's usually the gold post, that's going to be your battery wire. You'll see on a, the battery wire that the kit comes in, that's the one that you end up cutting off of that wire, but it's right here. This will be on the wire that comes with the kit. So that's going to be the only wire that goes there. You're going to have these two wires. This one comes off the regulator, and then you have this set of wires here. That's going to go on your other post, that's your auxiliary power. Take those, we can put the cover on. Just try to put these on as neat as you can, tuck them up. Alright, so get your wires on your your back post. That's for the wire comes off your regulator and your wires that come down um, to power everything on the bike itself. So put that nut on. I'm gonna take the one wire that comes off the battery cable that comes in the kit. I'm going to take and I'm put that on. wire off of your starter, put that on the top post. Now this will be the battery wire that runs to the battery box. That'll be here. And then just tighten up all your bolts. You'll be good to go on that. Right, so now we got all of our stuff installed here. Um, we can take put our air filter on. Um, so this air filter comes with different size rings for different size um, fittings, whatever. So what we do is we take the smallest uh, adapter out, put your air filter on, so you can get to your clamp, tighten it up. That's about it on that one. All right, so now we got this stuff done. We're gonna move on to uh, installing our fuel lines or uh, oil lines. Sorry about that. And uh, they're gonna come pre-installed, crimped um, with the connectors on both ends, and your heat shrink to protect from the exhaust. Uh, the front and your two holes here. The shorter one's gonna go in the front hole. And the 
longer one. It'll have a Lloyd's logo uh, engraved into it. That'll be your furthest back. Now, if you get the lines in, you're going to install the factory um, oil line clamp. Bolts in. All right, we're going to take the factory oil line um, mount, I guess, you know, that mounts the factory oil lines closer to the motor. We're going to reuse that, take it off the stock line. It'll say toward the engine, this side up. Pretty simple. Just slide that in place. Make sure your connections are good and clear of everything. Looking pretty good on that one. That's it. We'll go. We'll move on from there. All right. Since we got our oil lines installed, we're going to move on to uh, mounting up our oil cooler. Uh, it's pretty simple. It'll come through the kit with these mounts uh, put on and bolted up. Um, just check them for tightness when uh, you get them. Just to double check. You know. So what I usually do is I'll take and I'll put the um, lines on. Just loosely, just so they move around. You're not fighting them so much trying to get the fitting on. Alright, uh, I already took and put this stud in on the other side. This comes in the kit. It'll, it's going to thread into this bolt hole. So I'll start with one on the one side. I'll catch that. Pull my oil cooler up. Line up the bolt hole. Start it on the shorter side of the thread. That's the part that goes to the bike. And then now, turn that in, and that's it. All right. Now that we have our floorboard off over here, uh, we're gonna install our rear master cylinder um, reservoir relocation bracket. So what that is, you take the old, uh, take the bolts out, which I have my hand, reinstall this one, bend facing um, towards the outside of the bike. Put your bolts in. Put your reservoir in there in the slotted hole. And install your hardware. Uh, now we got our oil cooler in. All of our stuff in the front end, we can seal it all off with our cowl piece and our side cowl. Um, this is our side cowl. This is a core part. This needs to be sent back after you get your kit. We send it back. We cut them and send them to you. So um, go through and do that. And this is all the part. This is the front cowl screen. This is going to slide in the front, cover your exhaust and all that stuff from debris and road stuff. So we're going to slide that in. Okay. These spaces are included in the kit. Um, these go behind this bolt. This bolt will be in the kit also. It's part of the uh, supercharger kit. Okay, put that on the back side of that bolt. Put this in place. And then we'll tighten up our bolts. Uh, the last step we have on our supercharger kit is installing our battery. Um, because of room and all that stuff, we found the best spots in the bag. I don't know, you know, we got sacrifice storage for performance, I guess, but it seems to work for us. This is what we're going to do. This is our battery box. This is going to come in the kit. The way I do it is I take and I slide this over the battery, set it in the, the position I like in the front of the left bag, make sure everything's flat, push down nice. Um, I'll take a silver sharpie and I'll mark my corners where I have it. So I'll make my mark off the corner of the bag, corner of the box, and the corner of the box. I'll take this out. I'll slide the battery box off. Put this down and I'll match my marks up. See there and there. Mark my holes where I'm going to drill. I'll drill those holes out. And then uh, I'll install the battery. 
and move on to the next step. Alright, so this is, these are installed with the kit. These are a uh, brass bulkhead bolt with two washers, uh, two nuts and a star washer. Uh, we take these, this is uh, one of the reused wires from the uh, ground off of the original wiring harness uh, off the bike. So what I do with these is you're going to find a hole that works for you, an area that works for you, drill a hole through and place these things through. Um, there's no right or wrong way, this is kind of whatever works out the best way for you, whatever way you like. The reason we do this and not um, a rubber plug or something through the bag for the wire is because of these um, channels in here. It makes it kind of hard to get the uh, the right size rubber and grommet in there for the, the wires. Right, so now we're done with that. We're ready to put the bag back on the bike and hook up our wires behind the bag. That'll be the next step. We'll show you guys how to do that. All right, so now that we got the bag over here, we're gonna hook up the rest of our battery lines, uh, battery wires. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is, when we installed the hot lead earlier, um, I ran that back up along the frame behind the passenger foot bag. So I'm gonna take that wire and hook it up to my positive lead on my bulkhead bolt right now. that's on loosely. Uh, next step I'm going to do is behind the ECU there's a bolt that holds the mounting plate on. I'm going to take that bolt out. I'm going to use, I'm going to grab my ground lead that comes off my ground bolt head fitting. I'm going to put that bolt through the ground lead and ground it to the frame. Tighten up all my bolts, I'll install my bag, and that's the last step um, we have for you guys on this supercharger install.